Hey everybody, this is Dr. Nick Ciardiello. I'm a general and cosmetic dentist based out of New York City and New Jersey. Currently, I am doing a one-year general practice residency at Jersey Shore University Medical Center. Uh, I hope to help you guys as much as I can. I have a bunch of questions here I'm gonna get to in one second. Before I do that, uh, they just wanted me to you know, tell how I got here. So I, I'm actually from New Jersey. I went to St. Joe's High School in the touch of New Jersey. Played baseball there. Uh, work, work my butt off, obviously. Got a scholarship to play baseball in college. I actually played at College of the Holy Cross, um, which is up in Massachusetts, Worcester, Massachusetts, which is a Division I program. After that, uh, I actually took two years off. I uh, was worked as a personal trainer, a bartend, worked at a restaurant, did a couple different things. And then after that, I actually attended Rutgers School of Dental Medicine. Uh, graduated about five or six months ago from there and now I'm doing my one year general residency. So that's how I got here today. One sec, my computer closed. So I'm gonna go through the questions now. Uh, so the first question, what did you wanna be when you're growing up? So I actually wanted to be a baseball player. I played baseball my whole life, I uh, loved it. That's pretty much what I wanted to do. Uh, both my parents didn't go to college. Uh, they wanted me to go to college, obviously. They, they weren't sure what they, you know, they were trying to help me in any way as I can, but like, I wanted to be a baseball player. That's all I really thought my whole life. Actually, until my freshman or sophomore year of college, that brings me to my next, the next question. When and why did you decide to become a dentist? So about halfway through my freshman year, um, I decided I wanted to do something medical. So I actually got the pre-med slash pre-dental concentration at my school. I wasn't majored at this point but I didn't know if I, what I wanted to do in the medical field. So I actually went home uh, over break to see actually my dentist just for a regular checkup. And he was asking me all these questions. He's like, hey, would you know what you want to do? And I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Hey, hey, why don't you come in and shadow me? So I actually went in, I shadowed him uh, and I fell in love with it. So that's pretty much how most, most from what I hear, most dentists kind of have stories like that. Uh, it's kind of by chance. And I'm, I'm, ha I'm so happy that it happened that way. And I still actually keep in touch with that dentist. Is actually like a mentor to me. Uh, so again, that was like between my freshman and sophomore year. Okay, my number three question. Knowing what you know now, what major would you suggest students take to benefit them in dental school? So I actually majored in math in dental school or in uh, undergraduate, but I also had the pre-med slash pre-dental concentration. Uh, to be honest, your major doesn't matter when you're applying to dental school. Uh, they like to see different things. I mean, a lot of people do the bio or chemistry route, but it doesn't matter. If you do well in your respective major, it doesn't matter. They don't care. If you do well, it's good talking conversation in your interview, actually. So I had some people, oh, why math? Well, I just like working with numbers, so that's why I did it. Uh, after seeing the course load, maybe taking bio or chem helps a little bit, but it's not it's not gonna help too much in the long run. So don't worry, major in anything you want, something you like. Okay, fourth question, you played baseball in college. How'd you manage to do so well academically and juggling athletics with academics? This is actually pretty so, tough. I went to a pretty good uh, academic school. Uh, Holy Cross is known for their academics, uh, not so much for their sports, but they're still division one, they're a pretty good school. Uh, it was kind of tough, to be honest. Uh, a lot of the baseball season, uh, we were traveling Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, it was pretty hard to study for exams, so I had to learn how to do the most I can in a little amount of time. Uh, every Saturday and Sundays, we had double headers, so that means we were playing baseball all day. Like, we'd wake up at 7 a.m., we'd play until 6 or 7 o'clock at night, and this was every Saturday and Sunday during the season. So you have to imagine, when I had a Monday morning or orgo exam, when was I studying? Uh, I couldn't study like everyone else all Saturday, all Sunday. Uh, so I just had to learn to prepare early, prepare ahead. Um, yeah, take a lot of notes. Uh, I, could, I had to miss for a lot of Friday classes because we were traveling for games, even Wednesday classes, stuff like that. Uh, it's just, you know, learning what you can do in a certain amount of time is definitely very important. Uh, summarize stuff, make it you know, as simple as can. Every day you wanted to do something. There was always, every day I was always doing something. Uh, 
If I didn't have practice one day, I would study extra that day. I really had no zero days. Uh, and what I mean by that is I really had days where I wasn't doing anything. Um, when you play sports, you can't have any zero days when you're studying. If you want to do well, if you want to do pre-med, uh, anything like that, you can't have zero days. Uh, if you don't practice one day, get more studying done that day. But if you do have practice that day, you still got to get an hour in of work that night. You can't just go to bed like everyone else. Uh, I'd have practice till 7, 8, 8 or 9 o'clock at night. The other majors, uh, they weren't, you know, pre-med, anything like that. They would just go to bed after. They would do their work at a different time. But uh, our course load is heavier with labs and stuff like that. You can't have any zero days. Uh, do some work every single day. Okay, what's the next question? So, what do you suggest high school slash college students start doing now if they want to be seen as a strong candidate for dental school? All right, this is actually a pretty good one. So, um, yeah, when so there's certain dental schools have programs uh, that are kind of like pipeline programs that you can actually go to, uh, and they'll make you look better. Uh, to the admission committee. For instance, I went to uh, Rutgers School of Dental Medicine. Um, so what they had, it was called like a gateway to dentistry program. Uh, and then they had a high school one and something like that. So like my senior year of college, uh, I actually attended a two week internship at Rutgers Dental School. Uh, and this actually looked very well. You had to like apply to this and get into it. And it looked really good when you when we were going for applications. And it turned out, like, I think it was 30 people in that program. Half the people in that program actually got accepted into the dental school. So you can see that you're, they're seeing your interests early on. And if they see your interests early on, they're going to like you. So why not do that? They have high school ones, too. Uh, I know Rutgers does, at least. You're going to have to check this out uh, on the websites of any of the other programs. But I, look, what I would say is shadow dentists... Uh, look into these pipeline programs. Uh, maybe take one or two week, one or two weeks off just to do that. It's important. It's going to look good for your uh, application. They're going to like it. They're going to think you really love dentistry because not many people know what dentistry is before you actually start doing dentistry. Uh, so they want to see your interests. Just do that. Okay. Next. How do you suggest students? How do you suggest these dental students prepare for the de uh, dental admissions test to get into dental school? So what I did when I studied for the DATs, I left myself like two months, I think, prior to the actual exam to take it. I didn't take any courses, Kaplan, anything like that. I actually had a bunch of books that were given to me uh, from um, a medical student. So I was actually studying for the MCATs, actually, which was is, is more difficult than the DATs. Um, I was studying for that. Um, every day I'd put in four or five hours for two months and then I took the exam. A lot of practice tests, especially the week before the exam, you want to take a lot of practice tests. Um, yeah, but leave yourself a sufficient amount of time. Uh, do a little bit every single day. Uh, and that, 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 you know, that test isn't too bad. Um, don't worry about the perceptual ability apart. Not many people do that great on that the first time. Take it multiple times if you have to. Uh, my score was pretty good the first time. And what I did was I actually uh, emailed the admission director at my school and I at Rutgers Dental School and I asked him, I was like, hey, do uh, you think my score will be competitive uh, with my given GPA? And they, they'll actually respond. They'll be like, oh, I think you're a very good candidate. Or, hey, maybe you should retake it again. So I sent them my score with, uh, you know, after taking that, I did that two week internship with them. And she actually responded. She was like, you have a good score. Uh, you're going to be competitive, but why don't you take it one more time and try to get a point or two higher? And if you can, you'll probably get in. Uh, and that's what I did. I retook it a couple points higher and I got in. So listen to what they say. Don't be afraid to ask them. Don't be afraid to ask for help if your scores are good enough. Just do it. All right. I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. So next question. Any podcast slash books slash websites that you suggest for a high school college student? Okay, so websites that I suggest, if you're in for dentistry, there's uh, a website called Dental Town. You can, uh, it's all like pretty much free stuff. There's dental forums. Uh, there's a million things on that. Uh, sign up for that, That's, it's free. Uh, it's called uh, dentaltown.com. So this place is forums where dental students, dentists, they go over cases together. They talk about the interview process. Uh, you'll go. You can go on that website, and they'll tell you when, like, 
oh, all the interviews are sent out and you'll be able to see. So that's definitely an awesome uh, website. I would definitely use Dental Town. And also, so join the ADA, uh, the American Dental Association. You want to get on that early. There's a lot of resources on those websites. Uh, and, and then look for your state ones. So like the New Jersey ones, the New Jersey Dental Association. Uh, go on their website. If you can join early, join early. They have so many resources on those websites that will help you uh, when you're trying to pursue dentistry. Okay. Uh, I don't really listen to too many podcasts, to be honest. Uh, books, I read a lot of fitness books and stuff like that. Uh, dental books, I mean, everything's digital nowadays. Uh, a lot of the information I get is from CE courses and stuff. I'm taking a lot of cosmetic uh, CE courses, Botox, fillers, stuff like that. Uh, others, other we- I'm sure there's other web- uh, websites out there. Uh, you can look for other journals. Uh, depending on what field of dentistry that you're interested in. Uh, but I would say the major one is definitely Dental Town. Uh, that's, that's a big one. How difficult was dental school compared to college? Uh, for me, to be 100% honest, the only difficult really semester I had in dental school was actually the first one, because I did two gap years. So I did four years of college, I took two years off, I actually personal trained, uh, bartended, did some stuff like that, uh, and then I went into dental school so that first year back in dental school was actually pretty difficult just because I wasn't used to studying again but if you go to a good college with a you know good reputation to be honest like I thought my college was harder than my dental school Uh, but that might just be me Uh, in dental school they'll help you out a lot there's some resources everywhere Uh, you get archived exams you get old exams you get all this stuff They really want you to do well, and if you're not doing well, they're gonna help you. So don't be discouraged. If you go to a very good college, uh, it prepares you well. Uh, So, you know, don't be afraid. Uh, What was the biggest change? Uh, The biggest change was definitely, you're gonna be in lectures all day from like eight to five every single day. It's like a full-time job. In uh, college, if you don't play any sports, you know what, you take like maybe four, hour classes, maybe hour 15 classes a day, and that's if that. Uh, In dental school, it's eight to five every single day. Eight to five, eight to five, might even be later, might even be a little earlier, you got labs, you're working with your hands now, there's all this stuff. Uh, So that's the biggest change, like you're gonna have to be working all day in dental school compared to college. Now if you play a sport and you're in college, you're getting kind of used to this because you're gonna be on a strict schedule. Uh, whereas people who like don't do sport, they're not really on a schedule. They can kind of, oh, let's schedule all late classes. You can't do that in dental school. In dental school, they schedule your classes for you. They do all of this stuff for you. So you just have to make sure that you're budgeting your time the right way. Fridays and Saturday nights to go out, not really happening all, all, that, all too much in dental school. In college, you can do that all the time. It wasn't a big deal, right? Dental school, it's not. Like You're gonna have exams Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You're gonna have, like there was a month in dental school, we had like 30 days in a month, there was like 26 exams. And you have to think, oh, there was eight weekend days. So there's days we had multiple exams every single day. And that was like in my sophomore year. So you have to imagine like, be prepared uh, to miss out on life events uh, with your friends. It's gonna happen. You're, You're not gonna be able to go out with your friends all the time. But that's just something you need to know going into it. It's worth it. So don't worry about it. It's just, you're gonna have to work a lot. Uh, Work all the time, every day. All right, next question. So any materials you use to help prepare for the boards in dental school? Uh, So in dental school, there's a couple different parts of the boards. Uh, You take one, I believe it's your sophomore year, Sometime your sophomore year, that's part one. Uh, and that's based off all the didactic stuff that you learned in the past two years. So it's gonna be like book stuff. This is, uh, what, you know, it's, I think it's like an eight hour exam. And that's all about like physio, biochem, uh, dental anatomy, like basic dental stuff. And it's more about like the science and stuff like that. Uh, to study for that, I, I got the dental decks they're called, the MBDE part one dental decks. Uh, pretty much everyone uses them. Uh, I studied for two weeks, took the exam, it's a pass-fail, um, pass, thankfully. So pretty much all my friends I know, everyone takes two weeks 
uh, of your December break, our sophomore year, studies for it. You feel like you fail it, but you end up passing it. So it's, you know, the MBD, uh, the dental decks, look those up. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Kaplan, I think, has a couple on the part ones, but the dental decks are, are the good stuff. Uh, and then there was actually like a, two other parts. My senior year, you take another written one, and then you take a live patient one, and then you take a, excuse me, and then you take a hands-on one um, on like mannequin teeth. So the mannequin teeth were the root canals and the crowns. That one's like you practice a couple weeks before it, you're okay. The patient one's finding perfect patients for them. It's like the, you're gonna do two cavities and you're gonna do a cleaning. And that's pretty much what everyone freaks out about. Um, find the right patient. If you find the right patient, it's not bad. I had perfect patients. Like one of them was my mom. Uh, I knew she was gonna show up. That's always the worst thing about it. Um, and then those other parts, the written parts of that exam, there's more dental decks. So just do the dental decks. That's all you need, dental decks. Uh, any materials? No, I already read that one. What is the process for choosing a residency? So you have to decide you're about the beginning of senior year, the end of junior year. You decide, are you gonna specialize or are you gonna do general? I did general. Why do, why do you all wanna do general? I get to do everything as a general dentist. When you specialize, uh, the scope of your practice is sort of limited to that specialty. I think there's actually some rules now, they might change that, you might be able to do other stuff. Um, but for the time being, you're, if you do oral surgery, you're limited to oral surgery. Uh, AKA extractions, implants, jaw fracture, repairs, stuff like that. Uh, whereas a general dentist, I can do anything I want. So I was like, let's do general. Uh, so what I did was I wanted to stay in Jersey for my uh, residency. I think there was 13 in New Jersey. I looked them all up. Uh, I visited them. Uh, I was asking people who graduated the year before about them. What I was looking for, I was looking for stuff that were based in cosmetics, prosthodontics, like crown and bridge work, veneers, stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to go to a residency that had a lot of that stuff and that also had a lot of implants, obviously, because that, that's a huge thing nowadays. Uh, so when that came down to it, it came down, there was only a few that would actually, I actually wanted. Uh, and then another thing you have to look at when you're applying to these residencies, do they, uh, are they charity care or are the patients paying for this care? Because a lot of the times these patients are not going to pay for all this crown and bridge work. Uh, and then implant and then insurance companies don't accept, uh, long bridge cases and stuff like that. So the great thing about my residency, it's all charity care. So everything I treat and plan, I do. So that's one thing you definitely have to look at when you're looking at a residency. Who's paying for the work? Is it charity care? Um, is it Medicaid? What insurance is? Is it a fee for service? What kind of work are they doing there? If you want to do cosmetics, I wouldn't go to somewhere that is Medicaid. You're not going to do much crown and you're not going to do much bridge work. You'll do crown work for root canals and stuff like that, but you're not going to do much bridge work. So what really experience are you getting? Um, what are your long-term goals in your career? So my long-term long uh, goal, I wanna be partners in a practice. Uh, now, I was toying around earlier in my career if I wanted to open my own practice, but to be honest these days, everyone's doing partnerships. Um, if I wanna go on vacation, I want my practice to still be operating. If you own your own practice, you have no one else working with you. If you wanna go on vacation for a week, two weeks, go to Italy for three weeks, something like that, who's watching your practice? You have to get someone to cover you. When you're in a partnership, it's easier. You share the workload, uh, you share the business load, uh, the business aspect of it, because that's usually the most difficult part for any new dentist coming out. It's gonna be like deciding all the business stuff. Um, so yeah, doing a partner, that stuff's gonna be much easier, because you have someone sharing it with you, someone who has knowledge. Uh, so that's my goal. I want to be highly cosmetic cases in a partnership. I want to be doing veneers, uh, crown and bridge. Uh, I'm going to place my own implant, so I'm actually taking an implant course next year, uh, a full year one. So implants, restoring them. I want full mouth reconstructions. And I also want uh, a full, full mouth or rehab. And I also want to be doing uh, aesthetic cases. So that's why I'm getting my Botox and filler certification. I'm going to be doing anything like that. That's what I really like. Uh, final thoughts. Any final thoughts, wisdom, insight that you'd like to share with students on life or dentistry? Just be willing to put in the work. Uh, that's, you know, I'm huge into motivational uh, speeches. 
uh, reading books on motivation, stuff like that. Uh, you have to find what's important to you and you have to be able to, you have to want to work for it. Uh, nothing in dentistry really comes easy. You have to keep working at your practice. Uh, you're not just going to become great at it just by doing it a couple times. You have to keep beating, working on your craft long hours, day after day, uh, to be able to do it the way that you're going to want to do. Um, and then one last thing is everyone gets concerned with the money, uh, making money. It's not just about making money. You want to make as many other, uh, as many other people happy as you can. If you make a lot of people happy, you'll be happy yourself. Um, the more other people you can make happy, the happier you'll be. So just, you know, keep that in mind. It's not always about the money. Be sure you're, you're going to work hard. Um, you have to learn a lot and make people happy. Because if you can give people what they want, you'll have everything you want. I truly believe that. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Uh, it was great doing this. Uh, I hope it didn't drag on too long. Uh, again, this was Dr. Nick Ciardiello coming from the New York, uh, New Jersey area. Um, yeah, it was great doing this. Have a good day, guys.